Hi everyone, Janie here, and today I'm going to be sharing some cards that I made using my Sizzix card making dies, just to give you some inspiration as always, and I'm also going to be showing you how those dies work. So let's head on over to the craft table and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you a couple of the flip cards that I made, just to give you some inspiration, and then after that I'm going to make another one so you can see how it's done. And because Valentine's Day is next month, I am going to start with the Valentine. So I'll explain to you in a minute what I'm going to be using this little piece for. So I'm going to set it aside. And here is the card. And I've created a ribbon belly band for it to help keep it closed. So we're just going to slide that off. Maybe we're just going to slide that off. <laughs> it's got caught in one of my scallops. No. There we go. I guess you have to be really careful if you're going to put little scalloped edges on it. Okay, so here we go. You rock, cutie pie, text me. And then you open it and it flips. And then we have love you, be mine, and X's and O's. And so it's just really cute. It just flips just like that. And the papers that I used are just scraps from my stash from a million years ago. And behind there, I used some close to my heart glitter paper. And then these cute little candy hearts. I actually Googled it and found some free ones and printed them out. I printed them out probably a little bit bigger than they were meant to be, so they do have a slight blur to them. I guess you really can't see it. But then I used the super thick embossing powder from Glitters Galore and heat embossed them. And I really love it. It's really nice and thick. You probably can't see it on camera. But there you go. And this one I gave a scalloped edge, and I'll tell you more about that later. And so what this is for, this is where I'm going to be stamping Happy Valentine's Day and signing my name. And since I don't know yet if this is going to go to my daughter or granddaughter, I haven't done it yet. But my plan is to stick it right in there like that. So there we go. There is one. Now let me show you the other one. This one is a birthday card, and again, I have a ribbon belly band on it, so we're just going to slide that off. And this one is a little bit easier since I don't have the scalloped edges on this one. And so this one has butterflies, and it has the um, close to my heart glitter paper right there, and some little gems on the butterflies. And open it up, and... There's magical birthday wishes and some dimensional flower stickers that I added in here because this is very dimensional on this one. And so I just wanted everything to kind of fold up evenly. So this one is right there. This one is right there. And so it folds up nicely. And all of these stickers, these right here and that one right there, they all came from an old sticker pack that I don't know where I got it or how long I have had it. And the papers, again, are just old things from my stash. So I really can't leave you links pretty much on any of this so far. But there you go. Birthday card. Okay, and now it's time to make one of those cards so you can see how it's done. And I'm going to show you really quickly what I'm going to be using. So the first thing I'm going to be using is this Sizzix die, and it is called Flippets. They have different Flippets dies, and it comes with 10 dies in the set, and it looks like this. So we have 10 different pieces in here. They don't all get cut together, but that's just how I have them put together. And I could not find this exact one to give you a link to, but I did find another Sizzix one, the same style Flippets, but instead of having circles, it has a different shape that actually I think is much prettier than this one. And I'm going to be using some cardstock from Paper Temptress. I'll be using this beautiful teal. And I will be using this silver 
Laser Luster Glossy Cardstock. See if I can get it close enough. You can see it is just gorgeous. And I'm going to be using some papers or cardstocks from my stash that just happened to work with all of this. And I'll be using some close to my heart glitter cardstock in teal and in silver. And then I grabbed a few things here that I'm planning on using, like these flowers and maybe these rhinestones or maybe these glitter enamel dots um, and probably some other things. And I'll be making the belly band out of this gorgeous silver ribbon. It is so, I don't know what you'd call it. It is just elegant. I mean, just to feel it, <laughs> it's just gorgeous. So that's what we're going to be doing. And I'm going to be cutting these down to a size that I can put through my cuddle bug. And I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my cardstock cut down to six inches by eight and a half inches. And it doesn't need to be eight and a half inches, but you know, the cardstock is eight and a half inches wide. So I just cut six inches of it because it needs to be six inches across to fit this. And this is the base of the card. So I'm just going to line that up on there. If you're unsure of yourself, you can use washi tape. And I am just going to run this right through the cuddle bug here. There it is. And I'm gonna show you in a minute how we're gonna fold this, but it has score lines and the cut lines and everything ready to go. But I am going to cut out my other pieces. So this next piece is for the front of the card. So I'm gonna be doing that in this color. And you know what? I actually want the stripes to go that way. So, Make sure I have everything going the right way here. And get that on there. And oh yeah, that cut that out beautifully. So we have that piece now. And now I'm gonna cut the back panel and I already cut this piece down to barely fit, but you can also cut the front and back panel out of the same, you know, cardstock or patterned paper if you want. You don't have to do it in two different colors. You also don't have to, you know, have your paper or cardstock cut to the exact size either because that does make it a little difficult lining things up. And there we go. So now I have my back piece. I'm actually going to cut out a second back piece because there's something that I'm not sure of that I want to do. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure of what I want to do, but there is options. And so I'm going to show you both options. And in order to do that, I'm going to need two pieces. Okay. So let me grab that out and let me show you what I'm going to do. There is this scalloped piece that it comes with and it only cuts the scalloped edges. It doesn't cut along this edge. And so I am just going to line this right up and actually I am going to use washi tape because I want to make sure that everything stays perfectly in place. So I'm going to put a piece of washi tape on that end and I'm going to put a piece on that end and I'll show you what that does. There we go. It gives it a scalloped edge. So I have options now because I am not sure if I want a scalloped edge or a smooth edge for the card. And I'm not going to bore you with the rest of the die cutting, but there are a variety of circles, um, some with scalloped edges, some with stitching, and you can use whatever you want. You can layer them, which is really fun. There are all kinds of options, and I'm going to go cut out what I need, and you'll see what that is when I come back. 
Okay, I've got everything die cut and it's time to start putting this together. And there are score lines and there's the cut lines. And so right here, there are score lines on either end and it is really easy to fold. And then on this side, there is one right there. And so I guess you would say this one was a mountain fold, this one was a valley fold, and there is the card. And again, as usual, I keep forgetting to bring my bone folder over, but I'll just use my fingers. Okay, so there's the beginning of the card. And now we're gonna take the front piece right here, and I'm gonna glue that on just like so. And then we have the back pieces, and I cut out two because one could go on like that, or one can go on like that. Now this one, as you can see, these have rounded corners, and this also has rounded corners on the outside, so it really does look good together with, you know, rounded corners all the way around. But I have decided, after cutting out two of these, that I think I wanna go with the scalloped edge on this. And so I'm going to start off by gluing these two pieces on. And you know what? I'm not sure yet. I'm either gonna speed this up or maybe I will just come back after I've had it glued on because I'm pretty sure you guys know how to glue and really don't need to see this. But I'll show you this part right here. I just go around the edges just like that. And you know, you can use whatever glue you use. Um, I always use my beacon. Okay, so I guess I'm showing you this part without speeding it up. And then I'm just gonna glue on the other piece and I will be right back. Okay, now that we have the front glued on and the inside, it is time to start decorating and I have a lot of pieces die cut here. And one of the things that I wanted to show you is that with these cards, I just use the basic circle. But there is a larger piece with a scalloped edge, kind of like a flower, that actually fits beautifully behind there that can be used. And that's what I'm gonna be doing with this card right here. And so I'm gonna be gluing these pieces on here and then I'm going to be gluing it behind there. Now, I'm not gonna show you all three of them, but I will show you the first one just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about doing. You know, it'd be nice if the glue would come out of here. Okay, so I've got some glue on there and I'm just gonna glue it to the center of this, okay? Now, I already have one that I've glued together, so I'm going to use this one. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna be gluing it behind this front piece. So here's the front piece. I'm gonna be gluing it behind it like that. And I'm not gonna put the glue on here, but I am going to put the glue on here because I know that this is gonna cover it, but if I put it on the wrong place on the other circle, then the glue would show, of course. So getting the glue on there, and I am just going to line this up like so. Okay, so there's that little sparkly edge showing right there. And I'm going to be doing that all the way down on all three of them. And I'll do it off camera so that you don't have to sit here and watch all of that. And then I'm going to be taking this piece, which also has a little scalloped edge, and I'm going to be gluing that in the center right here on the front. So I can do that right now while I'm talking to you. And then I'm going to go do the same thing to the other, the other two circles. And then I'll come back and we can do some more decorating because I have a few things here that I'll be using. And one of the things I wanted to say earlier that I'd forgotten when we were talking about, 
you know, the scalloped edge or the straight edge. So if this was a masculine card, and I'm going to make this a feminine card, but if this was a masculine card, that would be perfect for just using the um, straight edge with the rounded corners. Okay, so there's the first one. And you're wondering, oh, is it going to look like this? No. I have these that are going to go right here on the back. Really pretty pearlescent. Let me see if it'll show up on here. It's hard to get it to show up, but it's a beautiful pearlescent that matches. And that's where I'm going to be stamping sentiments all the way down the back. And I am not going to put those in there until I decide if this is going to be a birthday card or an anniversary card. And I won't know until the time comes that I want to give it away. So all of these little circles, I'm not going to be putting in there today, but you'll see what it's going to look like. Okay, I'm going to go do the rest of these and I'll be right back. And there it is. So that's what we have so far. And now that that's in, I'll show you what the back will look like. So I will have sentiments stamped on each of these. Oh, I have too many on that one. Get it centered on there somewhat. <laughs> and this side will look like that with whatever the sentiments are. So let me move that and it is time to finish decorating. So while I was off camera, I added some rhinestones to these beautiful glittery butterflies. And I'm not sure if I'm using them all yet. You know, I haven't planned this completely out. And I also got one of those flowers. I know I'm using this. And I decided that I'm going to be using these rhinestones and not the sparkly enamel dots. So let's get started with decorating. And it's going to be a challenge because it's going to keep doing that. I was going to show you that the flower is dimensional and it can go right there on the front. And I'm going to show you why. Because as long as it's not too tall to get in the way of the movement of this, then it's going to be just fine. So I'm going to be putting butterflies here and here and the flower in the center. And then I just need to decide, you know, am I going to be adding, you know, this butterfly as well? Or am I going to be adding a butterfly there? or possibly a butterfly off the edge right there. I know the camera's too far away, right? Let me bring this up closer. Okay, so I could put the butterfly there, or I can put it over here, or I can use the larger butterfly and stick that over there. I have decisions. The only thing I know for sure is what you see going right down the middle there. And so I am just going to start gluing all of that stuff on now that you've seen it. And I'll be right back. Okay, now I've got the butterflies and the flower on there. And that works beautifully. And I was just really upset that I didn't have any teal ribbon because I would have put a teal ribbon right here. And then I remembered something. I have this really awesome die set from Queen of Craft that I know you guys have seen me use before if you watch my videos. And it comes with three different border dies. This one you can actually put ribbon through. But I thought, perfect, I'm going to make my own ribbon. And so what I did was I used that and cut out a piece of the same teal, can't even pick this up here, same teal glitter cardstock that I'd cut the butterflies out of and that other ring right there. And I thought, you know what? That would look perfect there. And since I hadn't found a place I wanted to put the butterflies because nothing looked right to me, but once I put that on there, I thought it looked really good with the butterfly there. So that's what I'm going to do. And I think before I do that though, I'm going to come over here and add some rhinestones because I am just in the mood to decorate things up. And so 
each of these little little scalloped areas here, I am going to add a rhinestone to. There. What do you think of that? I actually really like that. I think that may be one of my favorite parts of this card. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little glue to the back of this. We're gonna add this to the card. I'm hoping it's not overkill, you know, with so much going on on it. That's another thing. Just let me know if maybe you would have left it just the way it is. Actually, let me take one more look. Maybe I will leave it just the way it is. So let me put this on there. Let me set the butterfly on there. What do you think? You know, that might actually be overkill now that I've got it together. Maybe it's just beautiful that way. Holy cow, decisions, decisions, and I am one that just hates making a decision, but now I'm thinking I like it that way, and I'm thinking that this is overkill. Well, you know what? You can tell me below in the comments what your thoughts are on that. And my dogs right now are giving me their opinion on something, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. The dogs were just chasing a herd of white-tailed deer out of the yard, so all is good. And while I was away, I messaged my husband and my daughter to ask their advice on this card, and they both said the same thing. They said it's just what the card needed. And so there it is finished. Well, almost finished. <laughs> it won't be finished until I know where it's going, but I love the way this turned out. It is absolutely beautiful, and I hope you like it too. If you like this card fold, I'll have a link below in the description box to the other Sizzix Flip It's die that's similar to this, and I will also have a link to the Queen of Craft die set that I used to make that border, and of course there will be a link to Paper Temptress where you will find many beautiful papers and cardstock. Thank you all for stopping by, and I look forward to reading your comments, and happy crafting, everyone. Bye-bye. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already subscribed, I hope you consider that, too. And if you do, be sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos or giveaways. And I hope you stop by Crafters Castle on Facebook, and also Crafters Castle Challenge Blog to enter your creations.